Hello guys, and welcome back to another episode of the Playing as the Trek Empire in Stellaris. So, right as we left off, this was not caught on recording, unfortunately, because of just what happened, but we got the Orb research project, and I believe that is in a track on map. It's up here in the Gargantua system, and we don't have any scientist that fulfills the requirements yet, at least I don't think so. Well, actually we do. We could get him on it, but the lower level he is, the more likely he is to fail it. And so I'm going to wait till he's at least a level 4 before I do that. So, let's get into the episode. We were leaving off preparing to get colony ships. We have one month left. And we have more than enough resources to build our first colony ship as soon as we get that technology. So that will be something we're doing. Uh, we're going negative on energy balance, but that will sort itself out in time. We can actually probably just come in here. Research complete. Yep. So we'll pause that. Uh, where's the energy at? The energy is right over here. So we'll just tell our construction ship to build a mining sta station really quick. That will get us in the positive, at least for a second until we build our colony ship. Now we have better farms. Those are useful, but they aren't really. They come up all the time if you wait until later game. We have propaganda broadcasts with planetary unification, and it does unlock further administration techs, and it gives us more influence, which obviously is good for passing laws. So I, I feel like I'm going to go planetary unification. I mean, Xeno zoos are just sort of a waste of space, in my opinion. I mean, it does give two society research, but I'd much rather do uh, planetary unification for right now. More useful in the early game than happiness. Especially with our species traits, which are obviously fanatic spiritualists and individualists. So, I mean, their happiness is pretty high. Because if we look at this, it's minus 30 just from being fanatic fanatic spiritualists, and then as we level up, it would basically be impossible for any of our colonies, even though they'll be like on the other side of the galaxy, maybe over here, the ethics divergence won't be negative. At least it shouldn't be. Um, that can obviously change. <clears throat> Sorry about that. But there's also been another update that I've been just been aware of. And it's that you don't need to research specific colonies anymore. So you don't need to research how to colonize desert worlds, for example. And I find that interesting. And it kind of does make sense. I mean, you don't really need to... If you can already sort of live on a planet of a similar type, for example, Savannah, then desert isn't really that big of a difference. But other planets, such as Arctic worlds and... Well, tomb worlds are always terrible until you do something with them, but... Uh, Alpine worlds and tropical worlds, obviously those have become much worse for your species. So let's continue playing. We're going to tell our spaceport to produce us a colony ship. And I have thought of a naming convention for the colonies. It's basically going to be Trek, Colony, and then the name of the star. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And then it'll be, co and then it will say Trek, uh, Sholmak, for example, Colony, I, so like Roman numeral namings convention and we still do have this gamma alien presence up here which they are obviously an empire because they do have a orbit around a star now there is a glitch that I noticed with this is that if you come in here and you click on their world oh maybe it was just the one game but it was an issue where if you clicked on them on their home world it would show up with their name so you know what their name was going to be before you even met them. But I guess that's just in one of my games. Maybe it didn't happen in this game. Probably just a random glitch, I guess. Uh, we will survey this system. It does have a colonizable planet. Uh, not here. Maybe here because it's close to our borders. And then back here. And here again. Not a very good way to survey, but... That's what we got for now. Our colony ship is almost done. I'm going to check out the surface of our planet, see if there's anyone who's unemployed. 
we got two so far, so I can build a mining network. What's this? Oh, okay. We are running low on energy, so I could just move you here and you here and build a power plant. That should help. Okay. So our military is just sort of sitting out here, so maybe send them out through this way. Just to see if there's any more colonizable planets out here that we can prioritize before those that were already within our own borders. Now, I've mentioned this before, and it's that I think that the New Worlds, like the Savannah, um, I believe they're Savannah, Alpine, and the, I think there's one new, one other new one. They are, I don't know how to say it, but they they don't seem to spawn as often as like the original core ones, like Tropical Worlds, uh, Tomb Worlds, obviously. Desert, Arctic, continental, arid, you know, those sort of things. And I just noticed that they don't spawn in nearly as often as, say, you know, the savannas and alpines. And I think that might just be something in the game where they haven't adjusted it yet, but I'm not sure. Maybe it's just my experience, but it seems like every game that I've played where I've experimented... Whoa, okay, don't know what happened there. Alright guys, welcome back. That was a quick glitch in the system. Uh, I don't know what happened there. But we did just inter uh, interact with another space with another space empire. Not really sure how that's going to go. I think these guys, yep, these guys are a guild over here. So if we can get them within our borders, that'd be pretty good because then no one else can get access to them. But um, what I was saying was I just think it might be a glitch, but it might just be my game. But I have played other games too, and I've noticed that they don't spawn nearly as often. Maybe we'll colonize this little rim right here, because the, even though they're lower on the habitability scale, because they are yellow, they do ha have um, some nice worlds on there, like 20 desert, 24 arid, 14 arid. But I might wait until we get um, the genetic modification ability so that we can just make us... I don't know if they... See, this is my problem that I have. I'm not sure if you change their world preference that they become a different species. And the problem with them becoming a different species is then that they're not the ruling species. So I think if you just change the world type, you're okay. But if you change anything else, it becomes different. All right, good. We've just finished our colony ship. We'll send that off. Now, which world's bigger? This one's eight, fourteen percent eighty, and this one's thirteen and eighty. And this one's more closer to being on the edge. So yeah, I'll say we. Well, actually, I'll show off a new feature though they have that you can go to the expansion planner in this drop-down bar. You can also press F nine, and it shows you all the planets that are available to you to colonize. Sorry, I just got a text message. Um, but it shows you all the worlds that are colonizable to you. So let's just click here and look, take a look. Because it also matters how many blockers are on the planet. So there's three here. And yeah, so it's a lot worth a lot more to colonize this planet first. And this is what I like, is that you can just press this button, and it automatically gives you the colony ship. That's pretty nice. I'll probably place it right here. Uh, but, yeah, I think that's the best place to put it, because it is centrally located, and we could give a lot of power bonuses. So, this is Epsilon, so we'll call this Trek Epsilon Colony 3. Or 1, I don't know why I said 3. Trek Epsilon Colony 1, yep, that's the format that I'm going to use. That's just what I'm going to use for right now. Um, I'll probably change it later, but it's going to be in some sort of n numerical order because this is more of a. I'm always thinking of them as sort of like a very technical group of. a very technical species. So we'll send off our colony ship. It will cost us 30 uh, to colonize, which is something I like. Is that before you kind of just had to 
hope that when after you were done surveying that it wasn't going to be too massive, so you didn't know how to save up. And we do have a desert roll up there. So, and I'm not sure why it's green, because usually they're at least yellow, so it probably has a modifier that makes it better. There are some alien vessels. I believe that my... Yeah, they're gonna warp away. I don't think they're under attack, though. Uh, an abandoned light pod was detected close to the orbit of Hiram 2. It is covered in scorch marks, presumably from when the pod's mothership exploded, and preliminary scans suggest it was built more than 5,000 years ago. Uh, they opened it up and revealed some dead alien wearing a uniform. Okay. Too bad for him. Uh, but we will be maybe colonizing this? I don't know. I'll have to check. What What is around here? Looks like a... Probably mining drones. So I will have to destroy that if I want to colonize up there. But that is a good world to colonize. Because it will expand our borders out here. And, you know, hopefully block some other species in. Because obviously if another... if Once another species gets a lot bigger than you, if they are, say... I, say I have this nice little chunk right here. But then they have this entire chunk right here. There's no way that you're going to win at that point. Because they just have too much resources. Uh, you'll get involved in a conflict and they'll be able to rebuild their ships ten times faster. So it's really important that you outgrow faster than the enemy. Because if you don't grow faster, you're going to either have to become allies with them or you're going to be taken over. Uh, the sur survey of Hiram 3 has revealed that certain regions of the planet are home to primitive alien proto alien civilization. Our probes show that their Neolithic culture has mastered fire and developed a rudimentary spoken language but we have yet to see any evidence of metallurgy or written communication. Interesting. So that's out here. So that's a 20 desert world. That's a 24 arid world. And that's a 14 arid. So I'm not sure, if I colonize here, I might not get here. But if I colonize here, I might get there, if that makes any sense. Uh, because I don't want to have to colonize all these. I might, I might colonize Bayou and Hiram, so I can get this one as well within my borders. That might be something I can do. Uh, my colony ship is colonizing. It's currently moving, though. So, we do have a lot of minerals, so I'm probably just going to build another uh, colony ship. And like I said, that's... Oh, research is complete. Improves spaceport. Nice. Now, do we want to go for the mineral bonus? I feel like we do. That's more important for right now than getting an upgraded uh, missile type for our ships because, I mean, if you look at it, they aren't that good to begin with, and in another playthrough that I have, the level 2 are, are the rockets are really just terrible to start off with. Most missiles are because it, towards the late game, too, they're pretty weak to begin with, and by the time you get the really good ones is when they have the point defense, and the point defense obviously destroys all the missiles. So by that time, they're completely useless to you. But I do want to colonize Hiram. Uh, now, Hiram 3 is the world that we would have to colonize, but that is also the world with the ancient proto-civilization on it. So if we click there, yeah, it would co to begin, it would cost 111 to colonize. And it's home to Stone Age Primitives, which I'm not sure if I want to exactly encroach upon that in case if we can possibly get them to, you know, grow as a species, but I might just do it. I've done it before. Nothing really bad happens. It's usually when you have unknown primitives on a planet is when it becomes a problem because then they are the ones who usually attack you. All right, let's see what we can do here. Is there any mining stations? Yep. We can get three right there. We do need to expand our energy production. Uh, we do have a... Oh, were you doing something? No, you weren't. I thought I told it to come down here and take this, though. Did it fade out of our borders? Hmm, maybe I didn't tell it. I know I told it to go somewhere, but I can't remember. I think it was here. So I guess I should come down here, then. Okay, play. Now... I'm not sure if it's worth it. I think that... Actually, I thought I 
Oh no, that was just a uh, Trader's Guild in here. But if we can get that Trader's Guild with Thunderbolts, that's pretty good. Okay, our colony ship has gently touched down at the mouth of a large river delta on one of the several continents that can be found on Trek Epsilon Colony 1. Or we can just call it Epsilon, but it's just the naming convention. This temperate forest region will serve as an ideal first landing site. It's been converted into administrative headquarters, and hundreds of tents and shelters are beginning to pop up. Excellent. And now we'll take months on end to actually finish. I don't like how it overlaps like this. In my other playthrough where I did this same naming convention, it didn't do that. Maybe it's just the one colony glitching out, but... So, Epsilon Indy is now going to be firmly within our borders. We don't have to worry about that anymore. Alright, now what happened here? I know for a fact there was energy. Did... I didn't think it used to do that. Did colonizing that planet just get rid of the energy? Because I know you can have... Oh, they're contacting us. Now, which one of these are, is it going to... Oh, yep, it's just going to be the zombies. That's the only one we know. They have a translator in language, and hostilities have ceased for the moment. And they are the Pogavan Autocracy. Alright. They're bringing greetings. They're being nice. Alright. I'll just say citizens send their regards. Now, let's see what they actually think of us. Alright, they're 25, they're going to be 45, oh, Xeracorp, I think they are the mining, or the guild up there, yep, they are the Xeracorp, welcome to Xeracorp, we are a business conglomerate, <laughs> operating out of the Epsilon Eridi. Danny system, specializing in the trade of minerals and energy, the very bl building blocks of civilization, as we like to say here at Xeracorp. Please do not hesitate to contact us if you're interested in making a deal. Well met. Alright, we're going to go talk to them, because I know there are different, I think there's different types of these civilizations. Now, minerals, minerals, strategic, yes, yeah, so th th I knew that there were these types of corps. Some of them give you information, others merely trade with you. So, I like this a lot in the sense that now, if, for example, because these are unbiased sources, they don't care about you at all. Like, their opinion will go up with you only based on how you trade with them. And I think that's a nice touch of the game. Because before, it's sort of like, well, <laughs> you declare war on someone and everyone all of a sudden doesn't want to trade you resources that you need to build your armies. Well, now, this is sort of like the, I don't know, the best thing I can compare it to is the banking plan from Star Wars, where they don't really care. They're just going to give you money, as long as you give them stuff in return. So, I think that's pretty nice. I mean, if we look, we can even trade for strategic resources once we get to a certain level. I mean, all we need is 50 opinion. Uh, trade for minerals and selected everything. You know, 1,000 for 2,000 energy. I mean, that's pretty... Or, we get 1,000 for minus 2,000, but, you know, if you get to the certain point where you have, like, thousands of minerals just sitting around, that's worth it to you. Alright, so, let's get back to this, then. Because now we do have to ex expand faster, because these guys will be actively competing with us. It does look like they only have one colony, though, so we're good in that sense. Uh, they are just sitting around now, so continue moving around, see if there's anything we can colonize up here to box them in. That always confuses me. Some of the stars are a little bit too big, in my opinion, for the background. Because you, that one right there, or it's covered now, but this one right here looks like it might be a star. So you click on it, and then you realize that it's not. Alright, so... Epsilon Indy... Ep oh, it's in the... Uh, looks like it's... So we got like a few months. We got a few months. Six months, I believe. Well, not five. But I'm not sure what I'm going to colonize first because this will expand my borders, but this will also... 
I feel like we have to colonize here. Because then that will give us these in our borders, and that means that they're cheaper to colonize. Uh, then we can get, be closer to here, and that means that the distance will cost us less influence. So I think that we do need to do this planet right here. Because this one will, I'm pretty sure this one will be within our borders. And then that will make, when we colonize that one, this one will be within our borders. When we colonize this one, I think they will be within our borders, at least close enough so that they can't really jump around. We got another savannah world up here. But there does seem to be more mining drones. So we're going to have to build up our military if we want to take over these planets. Because if I check, I mean, these mining drones are... Yeah, I believe if we tried to send a colony ship, it would be too slow to colonize before they destroyed the ship. So we would have to actually wipe out that one. But for this one, maybe not. Maybe not. Depending on what angle we came in from. If we came in from up here, we might be able to do it. But it's better safe than sorry, especially with this. I'd rather not risk an entire colony ship. Which I guess contain a quarter of a million people on them. I'm not sure exactly. But that's what the game seems to imply when you read. Uh, I, I can't remember which one it was. A, I believe it was the alternate for the United Nations. Uh, we've encountered Epsilon aliens in the Civ Siliv system. Uh, I don't know where you encountered that from. I think I have people going around there. Alright. Just go there. Alright. Looks like... Might be a... Might be a... Alright, so this looks like it's going to be a plantoid species. But where are they located is my real question. Uh, we'll leave it be for now. I don't like 20%. <clears throat> because you can get it down to like zero percent. Uh, spaceport is finished its construction queue. All right, you are gonna go and colonize. All right, so there's twenty here. Let's go to our expansion planner. So here in three, we have twenty. Wor we have twenty tiles. It will cost us more influence, but influence is usually not spent, so that's okay. This has a lot of worlds blocked off, so 3, 6, 9, 12. So that's still more than this one, because this one has a lot of blocked off too. So Hiram 3 is, in my opinion, still worth it. We'll colonize... Let's say here. No, let's go here. Because that means that we'll get a better bonus overall. And this will be Trek... Hiram Colony. Alright, that's good. Okay. They will colonize that for us. All good. We're close to getting another one. And a lot of you are probably freaking out right now, thinking I'm wasting too much on uh, colony ships. But this is just how my playthrough style goes. Is to overexpand and outcompete uh, any enemy that I come across. Alright, these guys are definitely a civilization here. Not sure. Oh, space pirates, piracy. I was hoping this wouldn't happen, but usually it happens about six or five years in. Sometimes even sooner, but that's what I've noticed in my playthroughs. Alright, good. They've established that colony. It stopped costing us energy monthly. Uh, parasitic elements always flock to new markets, seeking to cut into profits at the expense of those doing honest business. Space has proven no different. Several underground, several underground criminal organizations on Al Treknus have expanded their operations into space by converting a small fleet of civilian freighters into warships. The outlaws call themselves the Dark Riders. <clears throat> okay, so this is a problem because we are a plut plutocratic oligarchy and we basically pride ourselves on our trade. So, looks... nope, they aren't here. We just sort of have to wait until they come and invade us, which actually probably should get our ships down here. Forget all those other orders, because we don't want to get our ship caught out in the middle. Have no fleet when we're being attacked. Now, what are these? These are just mining drones, okay. 
I didn't notice those before. This is within our border, so it should be surveyed. So as soon as it's done surveying that, come over here. Survey. Good. <clears throat> so let's see here. We do have enough for another colony ship. And my reason for rapid expansion like this is that it gives us more research or more resources overall. So we will start going for energy first primarily before we go for food. I know it helps the growth, but we're good for at least another uh, two pops. So after this one is done growing and the next one, then we'll focus on the food. But until then, I'm just going to focus on getting more power. Because power is really what's going to determine how fast we can colonize, not how fast these planets grow. And they'll grow eventually over time, too. It's not like it takes... they'll never grow. It just takes longer. So, I'm not really all too concerned with the food amount as long as it doesn't go into starvation. Plus, we have technology that will become available to us. Like, say, for example, we were to switch this right now. We could just switch over to this really quick so that we don't lose it. Now, that's something I don't like about it. I mean, I like it for the gameplay. It makes it easier on myself, but it isn't realistic that all of a sudden... Uh, you can just switch in the middle of your research because that means that everyone, that someone could get all three of these at least partially researched for just one month and that will always be within their bar. So, I mean, I don't really know if I like this change research mechanic. I understand it, but it seems like it can be used pretty easily. It should be a limit, I think it should be limited to like maybe one switch per like F per like set. So you get one set, select it, you want to switch it, you switch it. It will keep, save your progress, but then you can't just keep switching off to go to another one and get progress on it. You can only switch off, say, once every few years. Alright, so this was what I was talking about here. Uh, colonial centralization. This gives us more influence, gives us production targets for 15% so more minerals. I believe that this is just per planet, but that's pretty good. Especially if you have a really resource-heavy resource heavy planet. Uh, and it gives us planetary capital, which gives us plus two to all of our adjacent bonuses. But then we also have mountain range removal. I don't think we have that on any of our current planets. Uh, we, got, we have one. So that's not really worth it to me yet to do that. So I think I'm going to go here, take us 75 months, and we'll just let that go. Now, colony ship. So yeah, I think we did lose the energy. I don't know if I like that, though. It doesn't make any sense to me that... Because you, you, you used to be able to do that. Like, for example, if I were to colonize this, I think I still get the two... I think you have to build the thing before Construction complete. you actually colonize. I think that might be how it works. But, I don't know. So this hopefully will connect up our borders. It probably won't. But as we get more border growth techs... We'll, that will grow up. That will grow together anyway. And if we get revolts too, that I've noticed that that grows your borders massively, and that really does help. So I'm just gonna let this run here for a second. All right. So it looks like we have a few colonizable planets. They're pretty good. I'm nervous that these people, whoever they are, m may colonize the same set. Which they don't. They colonize oceans, so they, they won't go after those worlds. But, ocean world, ocean world. So yeah, they'll colonize those two, because the, every uh, planet, or every species, empire, when it spawns in, gets at least two of its planets within its borders. So, uh, continental, uh, maybe this one only got one. Got unlucky. But usually you get at least one or two. Now, there's no ocean there, and there's no ocean there. So there's nearly no reason for them to expand out over here, other than if they were to survey it and see there was resources. But they don't have the military needed to take out 403 mining drones. Uh, Hiram is almost done with this with this. We almost got enough resources to build another colony ship and get to Bayou. Which, speaking of which, we should get our scientist to 
come over here and survey this. Let's survey this. Because we don't want to uh, lose out on that. And then we are going to go for Sholmac. Yeah, so this one will be within our borders. Yeah, this one should easily be within our borders. Bayou will not, so we will have to call it Bayou, but that will probably get us the Epsilon system. So that's pretty good. I'm going to keep these episodes to 30 minutes. So if I just take a look at this, we are at 30 minutes. So I'm going to put in a cut here, and, but I'm not going to stop recording. Uh, it's just going to continue on. So if you see the cut, if you see it seems to stop right here, that's what it is. So it's going to stop right here, and it's probably going to go to the next video. So I'll see you guys next time. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. It really does help out the channel.